Hi everyone, this is KSearch. Thank you for the support from the previous video to make this channel grow. Thank you very much. So this week, we are going to discuss full force on the topic of metastasis. From the previous video, we already have learned that it is vital to have a metastasis to define whether a cell is a cancer or not. You see, 60 to 70 percent of the cancer cell is have already initiated metastasis by the time of a diagnosis. So actually, we would we do not really know uh, what are the stages of the cancer during the diagnosis itself. First of all, we have to look at the routes of metastasis. The first of all is local invasion. Right? It's invade from the locally. Let's say this is a cancer cell, all right, and it will invade the local surrounding tissues. Right? That is the local invasion. And number two, the more easier is lymphatics. That's why the lymph nodes, right, it will invade into the lymph nodes. The first tire lymph nodes, the second tire lymph nodes, and also the third tire lymph nodes. Next, the mechanism is hematogenous. So it will go into the other way, go into the bloodstream and cause metastasis. And fourth is transylomic. Transylomic metastasis. The example is uh, cucumber tumor in breast or in gastric or in colon cancer. The route of metastasis is important. It also forms the basis of the TNM staging. Okay, I will start with transylomic. So, what is this word? Coelom. Coelom is peritoneal cavity. That's why we have. We also have a term coelostomy. Exactly, it's about similar. I would not say it's the same as laparotomy. Once I say laparotomy, you guys will know, right? Okay, so what does it mean by transylomic? That means it's transperitoneal or it's actually in the peritoneum itself, right? So, like, let's say the gastric cancer, it will just go transverse into the ovary and it causes the cucumber tumor. Right, so this is a transylomic uh, type of a metastasis. The other metastasis has been very nicely been described by Novell 1976. Novell hypothesis to the step of metastasis is much more well established. There's a caveat here there are a lot of uh, other models uh, we can also discuss in the comment section. But today, we are going to discuss only on novel steps of metastasis. Okay. There are only six steps. It's very, very easy, which is a local invasion. Then, it will start to intraversation. That means the cancer cell go into the blood blood vessels, and the the cancer cell had to survive the survival in circulation. How does the cancer cell evade the sentinels, right? And it had to get arrested in the distant organ, and 
extra position you have to go into the surrounding tissues then you will have to conquer right so it's a micrometastasis formation and lastly it cause the metastatic colonization so these are the steps we are going to elaborate this week imagine you have a tissue all right let's say this is a mucosa for example and there is pluripotent cells here and go all the way to become differentiated cells above one fine day there is a cell go rook remember our previous video you can show in the card here that this cell has become a cancerous cell the tumor cells will reproduce yes regular cell have nothing to do but reproduce and this is the basement membrane all right below the basement membrane there will be lymphatic vessels there will be venous vessel okay there are a lot of vessels inside here this is the first step it become a have a local invasion so how does this uh, local invasion takes place See, at the cell level we have uh, other cells defense mechanism in the body which is the white blood cells namely the macrophages the neutrophils and these cells are epithelial cells now they can transform from epithelial to become mesenchymal when they come press through the basement membrane another one thing that you should know that how does the epithelial cell it adhere to the mucosal cell because it have one protein is called e catherine so e catherine a protein has been down regulated in the tumor cells that is the one that caused the EMT and it go and attach to the extracellular matrix which is the surrounding tissue after the basement membrane the, once the tumor cell have already breached the basement membrane so it already be considered as a foreign foreign cell in the ECM and also it cannot go through the extracellular matrix because it's all have protein right okay so it will have to degrade the fibrous tissue the protein of the extracellular matrix and all these are proteases right those are the enzymes produced by the tumor cell to degrade the extracellular matrix uh, these proteases we call it metalloproteases mmp right we have a lot of mmp but the most important mmp is on mp1 2 and 9 these proteases mmp it will cause activation of a proteolytic of a urokinase like plasminogen uh, activation system or we call it upa or upa by causing this it this uh, proteases in the extracellular matrix what will thing will happen yes stroma will cause the uh, inflammation this is where the macrophage and neutrophils the dendritic cells even t cells and b cells will come in to reduce the population of the tumor cells here so you see it's actually not so easy for a tumor cell to metastasis but this is like a warfare it's very interesting because at the t cells we have a cd8 and also we have cd4 cells right so the very interesting fact that we know that cd8 actually it controls the elimination of the tumor cells however 
CD4 surprisingly it promotes tumor invasion and this one is by promoting the EGFR or we call the epithelial growth factor receptor of the tumor cell and it causes a more invasion in the tumor once it go into the extracellular matrix there are two highway for the uh, cancer cell to go one is the lymphatics another one is the venous it's always the lymphatics and the venous uh, okay that we just take one example it go to the venous right this can happen in lymphatic as well oh so this is the step where the intraversations comes in tumor cell will also cause uh, angiogenesis because it allows more nutrient and more oxygen and this is where the tumor cell will secrete vascular epithelial growth factor the VEGF other than uh, providing nutrient and oxygen it also a gateway for the bed of the cancer to call to go for the metastasis so this is called intraversation once they already have an intraversation the tumor cell have already invaded the venous and it will go all the way into distant organ when the tumor cell is already in the bloodstream it's also not getting any better <laughs> it has let's say the black the red color is the tumor cells it had to avoid the white blood cells the most important cell that will kill the tumor cell is a natural killer cells we call it NK cells oh those are the best of the best those are the assassin right those are the assassin of the tumor cell it will kill the tumor cells no matter what but how does the tumor cell get avoid uses a number of cytokines and one of it is actually thrombin and also capsin B and the cancer poor coagulant that is why when the tumor cell become advanced there's always a lot of uh, blood clots right and why it is because uh, the tumor cell are using the platelets it aggregates the platelets and causes thrombin so it covers itself and it can evade the uh, NK cells the white blood cells the tumor cells have already encased itself with the platelets so that causes embolus and the tumor embolus will go into the liver and they will cause induce a extravasation once the tumor cell already want to cause a micrometastasis formation which is the fifth step right this embolus will just stay there how does it stay there it will cause uh, another uh, and yes this is another this is a MMP MMP 1 or 2 right and also there's another uh, protein that it, uh, it secretes by the tumor cells it causes uh, vascular hyperpermeability this substance is called platelet angioprotein like 4 or in short form is and GPLT4. This is one of the um, important uh, factor that will cause uh, extravasation. One very really interesting phenomenon here is the tissue trophism, in which certain certain cancer cells have affinity to specific organ. Okay, I like said the stomach. The stomach have affinity to liver to the to the lungs right so uh, let's say the breast the breast have affinity to the brain to the lungs to the liver and to the bone so uh, we still don't know yet why this phenomenon occurs but 
this there is a pattern there let's say once the tumor cell already decided to stay in the liver it will cause this uh, micrometastasis formation and the last but the most important step is the metastatic colonization and once it's colonized it will go to the whole organ this is rather interesting uh, steps for us to understand this so from this model what can we infer from that is that if you see once you have already mm, detected the cancer you diagnose the patient the cancer cell might have already in the bloodstream of the patient so i hope you have already learned what is the metastasis so for those undergrad you actually just need to know the routes of metastasis right which is local invasion infected hematogenous and transylomic it's actually crucial for us to understand the steps so that you know how to manage your patient better thank you for tuning in this weekend uh, yeah last but not the least don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification button so next week we are going to talk more on the clinical aspect of uh, neoplasia and cancer right so stay tuned at the same time same day and same channel this is k search bye